Hi, Scott Whitley here. Hope you're doing well and welcome to this brand new video. This week, I'm going to show you what I call the other major pentatonic scale. It's a ton of fun to use and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it too. Stick around because later in the video, I'm going to give you a bonus tip on how you can create amazing runs and fills using scales that you already know. Roll that intro. The short clip that you just saw was me improvising using what I'm calling the other major pentatonic scale. Now, to tell you the truth, it's just the major pentatonic scale. It's the same five notes you're going to find in any other major pentatonic scale. The difference here is the fingering I'm using to play that scale and the expression that I'm kind of applying to those notes and the way that I'm uh, approaching playing those notes. Before we get into it, my name's Scott Whitley and I regularly produce content like this to help you become a better bass player. So if you enjoy this lesson, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I make a new video. First things first, to make sure we're all on the same page, I'm going to run through the major pentatonic scale. I'm going to do it in, in G, so that's your third fret on the E string. Well, that's the one I'm going to start with anyway. Okay, and it sounds like this. Here we go. One more time. Now it's actually a five note scale. And then I'm just throwing the octave on, on the top. The major pentatonic scale actually comes from the major scale and it's using notes one, two, three, five, and six from the major scale, okay? And it's a great scale to get you into improvising over major chords. The reason is it's removed some of the more, shall we say, questionable notes or notes that could cause a lot of tension uh, when, you, when you start out. And uh, pretty much any of those notes is going to sound quite sweet against a major chord. Whilst it's a great scale to improvise with, it can feel a little limiting when we're playing it in, in the kind of correct way, which is that one finger per fret style of playing. You know, let me just kind of try and kind of jam around with that a little bit. So I was, um, you know, managing to get stuff out of it, and and it has a very particular sound. It's, I guess, leaning more towards a kind of jazzy approach because you're playing every note very correctly, if you like, and cleanly, um, using your fingertips because you're using that kind of fingering. But there's a whole ton more you can get out of that scale just by switching up the way you play it. So this is the other major pentatonic scale. We're going to start on the same low G, the third fret on the E string. And we're going to play that. We're going to play an A, the fifth fret, on the same string. These are all on the same string. And then we're going to play a B, which is the seventh fret on the E string, all on the one string. So it's up to you. I'm going to do this for now. I'm going to play the G with my first finger, move it up to the A, and then use my little finger for the B. All right? And that's your first three notes. Now, those tie up completely with this, which is the kind of regular major pentatonic. It's actually what notes one, two, and three from the major scale as well. And then from there, this is where the magic uh, starts to happen when you're improvising um, and playing around with the scale. So the next two notes we play are the same frets we've just played, five and seven, but on the A string. 
Okay, so so far, it's frets three, five, and seven on the E string, and then frets five and seven on the A, like this. One more time. And just to prove it's the same scale, you can hear that's the same series of notes, right? And now we're just going to throw on the octave. That's the fifth fret on the D string. And so you've got a whole octave scale now. Again, let me show you the other way. And then this way. Okay. Now you can actually start off from that point into the second octave from there. So, so that's our octave. If we now think of that as the root, as this guy, the first note, we can play exactly the same fingering as we did here. Right? But from an octave up here. So we get this. So that takes us a long way. Let me tell you what frets those are. Um, it's five, seven, nine on the D string, and then seven and nine on the G. So I'm going to run it one more time, fret numbers. Then I'm going to talk about what the intervals are for, for people that are into that, which I am. Uh, and then let me show you what you can do with this, okay? So from the first note, three... These are frets. Three, five, and seven on the E string. Five and seven on the A. Five and seven. I'll move my first finger up there on the D string. And then we've got uh, nine on the D string. And then we've got f uh, seven and nine on the G string. Let me play it right through. Here we go. One more time. That's the basic shape of this other major pentatonic scale. Very quickly, let me tell you what those notes are in terms of intervals of the major scale, or relating to. We have a 1, a 2, a major 3rd, a 5, a major 6, an octave, a 2 or a 9, I'm going to say 2, let's just stay like 1 octave E, a major 3rd again, a 5th, and a 6th. So you've got uh, one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five, six. All right. But at the minute, it's just another way of playing the same thing. And it's not going to sound that different. You know, here's one way. Here's the other way. <laughs> same sort of thing, right? It doesn't sound that different. You've got loads of like pairs of notes that are a tone apart or two frets, right? So you've got this pair. This pair, these two, these two, these two, and these two. And this is where the magic starts to happen, because you can use the same fingering to play all these kind of different pairs of notes, and you can get really playful and almost dance, if you like, on the strings uh, using these pairs of notes. So, for example, the first thing you might want to try is playing each pair of notes that are a tone apart using a hammer on. So instead of plucking with the right hand each note, you might just play the first note and hammer it on. So one plug and then hammer that note on. And simply do that, going through the scale, finding every pair of notes that are a tone apart, right? I don't know what that's all about. Here we go. Check it out. Let me just play that a little bit more quickly so you can hear what that might sound like. It's got a really cool kind of fluid sound about it, right? There's no way you could really get that out of, you know, this shape, all right? 
that was doing it coming down as well. And then you could do the same thing, but descending. So we're going to play those same pairs of notes that are one tone apart, using a hammer on, but kind of coming backwards across the strings. So we've got this. You can finish off with a G there. Sounds great, and it's a lot of fun just kind of letting your fingers dance, hammering on between these pairs of notes. So check it out. Just going to kind of flail around a little bit. So that's just a little kind of example of how it can sound when you start having fun with it. And one of the things I think I added in there, aside from just doing straight hammer-ons, was the odd ghost note. So you get this kind of like... And you could do like two hammer-ons on the same pair. You know, just generally have fun. Just met, start by just learning to do that. And then just start messing around with it, just having some fun. Two important things, always play with some kind of rhythm, a drum track, a drum machine, whatever it is. You can search uh, YouTube for drum tracks if you don't have a drum machine. And also try and record if you can what you play or at the very least listen as you're playing and if you played something you really like just stop for a minute work out what you did and then play that over and over again so you'll never forget it another thing we can do is use pull-offs pull-offs are essentially the opposite to hammer-ons um let me give you an example if we take the seventh fret and the ninth fret on the g string so we do a hammer-on like that to do a pull-off we fret this note the ninth and then what we do you also fret the seventh you can do this like all the time you can have them both fretted with me i think i kind of fret the first note and then just bef before or just as i do the pull off i fret the seventh certainly wants to be just before this finger comes off anyway but here we go fretting the ninth then i push the seventh down and then i pull this finger off now, don't just lift it off, because this is what you get. Kind of worked, actually. But what you actually do is you kind of twist this down so that it... I'm going to exaggerate it. You can see it pulling the string, right? So this thing is actually plucking the string. All right. Just a little tip, sometimes if you've not done pull-offs before, what can happen is this. <laughs> you end up coming off the, the edge of the fingerboard. All right. If that's happening, then what you need to do is make, as you pull this finger off, almost push this finger up. Not quite, so you see the string move, but just put a bit of upward force to this finger. So you're kind of doing that, you know? It's sort of twisting motion. And that should really help you falling off the end of the fingerboard. Now you've got the idea, all you need to do is apply that to each pair of notes in this scale that are a tone apart. So it's the opposite to the hammer-ons. Like, so I'm going to do it descending, right? I'm going to go... One more time. Once you've got the mechanics of that down, it's got a really nice kind of flowing sound about it. Sounds like this. One 
One more time. Now, there are a couple of parts in that scale that are really quite tricky to do when you're doing these pull-offs like that. The first one is, I bet you've hit it already, when we're coming down, the next one is this, isn't it? So it's this bit. Because you've literally got to jump really quick. And there's a great way to kind of get around that. And it's using slides. Check it out. And that's got two advantages. The first is that if you watch the right hand, I'm only doing two plucks in total there, right? One there and one here. And that's it. So check it out. When you play this pair of notes, it's nine to seven, frets nine to seven on the D string. You then just keep the pressure on and slide quickly to the fifth. One more time. And again. Three notes from one plug. And then it's kind of easy going because you've got these pairs and these pairs. And then you could do the slide again. Okay. So the slide comes twice here. That's that, you know, down to the octave or the octave root. And the same at the bottom. So let me play the whole thing slowly with those slides descending. Here we go. Slide. Slide. And then you can take those slides further. You can use those up or down between any pair of these notes. One to the two. Three to the foot, no. Three to the two, or two to the three. You could do it uh, five to six, or six to five. You could do octave to the two, or back. All right, so let me try and play through, through that scale doing all ascending slides. Don't know if I've ever tried this as an exercise. Here we go. And on the way back. <laughs> and you could do that as well. <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, but you can you can mix and match. You could go up one. Um you could go down another. Up one, down another. That was me just picking random pairs out. And the more you do this, the more you kind of have fun with this. And like I say, just kind of dance around, let your fingers just dance over the strings going up and down between these pairs. You'll start to create some really, really cool sounds. And then you can lock those in into your musical vocabulary, as I said before, by just stopping and going, what was that? What did I just do there? You know, I'm really kind of nailing it. I'm just going to play a little bit with the drum machine just to kind of demonstrate these various different ways of playing this other major pentatonic scale and see if you can pick out what I'm doing. Here we go. So I was going kind of nuts there, you know, I wouldn't normally play all that, but I just wanted to demonstrate various different permutations, is that the word? That you can use to make fills and bass lines and all the rest of it.
Now, I did say earlier in the lesson, stick around because I've got a bonus tip for creating cool fills and runs using pretty much any scale you already know. And this is it. All you need to do, and I do this a lot, and so do a lot of other players, um, is take any scale at all that you know and play up that scale three notes at a time. So I'm not just going to play up it. I'm going to play the first three notes, then the second three notes, and then the second three notes, and then the final three notes. And backwards. So essentially, just to recap, you've played the first three notes, and then you come back to the second note of the scale, and you play three notes up the scale from there, and then you come back to the third note of the scale, and you play three notes up from there, and so on. And you can do that with any scale at all. You could do it with the blue scale, if you know that. You know, one, two, three, one, two, three. You could do it with any scale at all. Get it really, really fluid. It can create some really, really interesting sounding things. It doesn't have to be three. You could play four notes at a time. First four notes. The second four notes. The third four notes. So you get... Blue scale, you could do the same. You could do it with the major scale. You can do it descending on any of these scales. So like I say, any scale at all, rather than just play up and down, play three or four or five or even six notes at a time and then just kind of like notes one, two, three, four, you know, and then come back to the second note of the scale, and play four notes up it and so on. And it's a great way that you can use any scale that you already know uh, and turn it into kind of something new. I hope you enjoyed that. Please tell me how you get on with this in the comments below. Let me know if you have any suggestions of your own for ways you can use these techniques. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Cheers.